Capricorn. Um, I cannot apologize enough for you getting your reading in the middle of March instead of the beginning of March. Um, Aquarius is getting their reading today as well. And it's the middle of March and this concludes <laughs> the reading. No, I'm just kidding. Um, things have been really, really rough. And like, at first I thought it was just me <laughs> and it's not. It's like literally there are structures crumbling around us. We had your planet, your ruling planet Saturn at that 29 degree Aquarius with Pluto at 29 degree Aquarius at the beginning of March and for like a week before your planet ingressed Pisces and your ruling planet has been in your sign and Aquarius for the last six years. So Saturn has been comfortable there and doing whatever he wants and tearing down structures and rebuilding things at a pace that he wants to rebuild. And like there's this massive upheaval now that Saturn is in Pisces. We're watching things sort of just fall apart in the world and in our lives. And some people aren't going through it as hard as others. Um, <clears throat> I tell the whole story in the Virgo new moon reading, if you guys want to go look at that. But my partner and I are in the middle of a, an emergency relocation. Um, we've had the hardest time finding a place to rent. Like I think that we've applied to like a dozen places and most of the time we're paying these fees to apply to these places and we don't even get a call back, you guys. Like, <laughs> I don't even know, like I have no idea what's happening. So we've been in Airbnbs, um, and it relatively like our moods are good. Things are good. But if you'd like to help us, um, I have my readings are available. They're 20% off using the code spring 23. Um, and yeah, astrology and tarot readings are available. Um, we have a GoFundMe or there are other ways that you can donate as well. Um, we also have a hoodie and a sticker up at wildofparadise.com. Anything helps, even sharing our story. If you guys could just share our story, get it out there. Like, I don't care if strangers know that I'm going through a difficult time, you know. Um, I, we need our community right now. Like, we're really bad. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm not going to cry during a Capricorn video. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So, Saturn moved into Pisces. We're going to talk about a quick, a little bit of quick astrology for the Capricorn rising sign. Um, you can listen to it for your sun sign as well. It's probably going to resonate more as your rising sign because I talk about houses. The tarot will be sun, moon, and rising. Um, I love you guys. Thanks for listening to my introduction. <laughs> Things are so weird right now. <laughs> okay. Um, so your ruling planet is moving out of domicile for the first time since 2017. I remember when Saturn moved in ingress. Capricorn in December of 2017 I it was in my fourth house and I was homeless I became homeless and I'm seeing that it's happening all over again like the cycle's happening all over again and it's like this time it's like how are you going to handle it this time are you going to make decisions based off of fear are you going to like rush into the decisions that you're making based off the fear that you have or are you going to listen like look at all the lessons that you've learned like literally this was the ending of a cycle and a whole brand new beginning for a lot of people um and so when you when you start to see that pattern again like I mean I can't believe how literal those six years in Saturn was for me because I was homeless for two and a half years um but I was able to hustle to you know I could sustain being homeless is expensive and you, when you, I could hustle then because I had the energy to do it. Just don't have the energy to do that now. Like I'm trying, I'm really, I'm out here again and putting myself in. So think about that. Think about what was going on in 2017, specifically December 
of 2017. Think about where you were and then think about where you are now and how much you've leveled up since then, but you're watching some of the same themes play out because it's like, how are you going to do this differently this time? You see? Um... So Saturn will be um, in Pisces in your third house. Uh, since 2017, you've been going through an inward preparation and self-encountering that started with Saturn when Saturn was in your sign. You were working on this like inner worthiness inside of you for the last six years. Now you're tasked with structuring your own mind and how it operates on a day-to-day -day basis, patterns, attitudes, habits, as you encounter these parts of yourself, you could find it necessary to change. You are now going to be looking at the way that your mind was conditioned. Uh, the third house is about communication. It represents our third year of life. And that's when we start talking and walking, you know, talking in full sentences and being able to express ourselves. Um, so even if you don't recognize how you need to change life will do it for you so changes will of course need to be made and so during these changes you'll be experiencing difficult interactions with others who are used to older versions of you watch for depression signs if these changes become too much for you a lot of times when we feel depressed or low or anxious in some way, it's because we're not handling the themes of our Saturnian ruled houses um, in our chart or where Saturn is transiting in our charts. Um, when this transit is over, you'll have a better idea of how your inner world relates to the outside world. The Virgo full moon also ushered in that Saturn in Pisces. And, and so we really were hard on ourselves during that ingress of Saturn in Pisces. Uh, we have the new moon in Aries in your fourth house happening uh, on the 21st, the day after the spring equinox and the astrological new year. Happy new year to everybody. Um, and... The new moon in Aries is at the, it's at the one degree, it's at zero degrees in 49 seconds, but we astrologers like to round up. <laughs> so it's at the one degree. Um, and it really is a new beginning. Like it really is a time to jumpstart your life and to, you know, get things moving. March is a heavy month because there are so many transitions that are happening um, we're literally shifting a generation, a whole generation of kids that are being born right now are now Saturn in Pisces and Pluto in Aquarius kids. After the 23rd, when Pluto moves into Aquarius, he'll be in Aquarius until June, and then he will retrograde back to Capricorn for a little while, and then take a 19-year journey through Aquarius until 2043. Um, that's going to be happening... Um, I didn't even write it down, um, but it'll be in your second house. So you're, there's going to be a lot of looking at the, um, your self-worth versus like the, the, your stuff around you, you know, like, uh, Pluto is going to be asking you all the hard questions and are you identifying yourself with your material items? Are you identifying yourself with your job? Are you identifying yourself with the amount of money that you make? Pluto in Aquarius is it's changing the way that human humanity looks at each other. Um, the structures that we once all looked at, like you can see the housing crisis. I'm right in the freaking middle of it. Um, like the financial crisis, the housing crisis, all of these Taurus and Uranus moments that we're watching, watching things crumble. Pluto is at the 29th degree of Capricorn right now. And so we're watching the way this country was built on greed. And I mean, like, I don't want to get into politics or anything like that right now, but the way that this country was built on <clears throat> not the correct things like 
you know, food prices, food is a human right. And we have to like, we're, you know, I mean, like, it's one thing to be able to exchange services for food or something like, you know, whatever, but like food is a human right. Housing is a human right. And the way that we've actually made simple human rights luxury items, what is that? Like, so Pluto and Aquarius is going to undo all of that, like untying some things and retying some things. Oh, there's one more thing that we want to talk about. Mars will be ingressing Cancer until May 20th. This will be in your seventh house. So after being in Gemini, your sixth house since August of 2022, your brain's going to get a little bit of relaxing time. <laughs> I've had Mars in my ninth house since August and my brain has been like, bzzz, like on high alert. I, I don't know how many books I bought, but <laughs> I've read most like half of them. I think, I think I bought like five or six books while Mars was in Gemini. Um, arguments can settle into relationships if your ego is being too demanding of others. Remember that forcing experiences or lessons upon other people does not help them to learn anything. Everyone has a limit. Having Mars in your seventh house can be a little bit intimidating for other people because all of a sudden you, you kind of like start barking, <laughs> barking orders at people. Um, I've known a few people that have that Mars in the seventh house and it's like, um, they want to do everything for everyone because they feel like nobody can do anything for themselves. So they just kind of take the initiative, right? Mars taking the initiative. Okay. We're going to get a power of surrender card first. See what it is for mid-March for Capricorn. I promise you after I do Aries and Taurus, I'm going to do your reading and Aquarius for April. I'm going to start with Aries and Taurus because it's their birthdays, but then I'll do you guys. Surrender to trust. I feel so bad. <laughs> Couldn't help it though. Trust yourself and your decisions. Don't be swayed by other people's strong opinions about what you do. Take action and be confident that you have chosen the right path. Surrender to trust. Yeah, man, that's kind of a hard one these days. Um, remaining in faith and surrendering to trust is really hard right now. Uh, so, yeah, you know what? The first card that came out was the Queen of Cups. And I feel like that's kind of where you guys actually are right now. Uh, I feel like you are in that place where you have to listen to your intuition and allow your intuition to guide you through these difficult times. I promise you when I say those words out loud, <laughs> I even know how it sounds. Like I'm so tired of the spiritual community telling me that I create my own reality or that I am the universe and that I'm the one that can make these things change. And I'm like, I've used every tool in my human box to make all these things change. Like I'm not, why, why would I create this reality for myself? So we have to remember that there's this humanness about all of us right now. Um, but at the same time, we have to learn to trust that the universe is working in our favor too. We do as much as we possibly can. Um, don't lose your own humanity, you know, and just, you know, like it's, it's like the same way that, I feel like when Christians just say, just pray, just pray for what you want. Just pray for, like, I've seen so many people pray for what they want and then they don't end up getting what they want. And then we say, oh, but you know, it's all happening for the, it's just another, this, you know, the spiritual ways that we just shift the words around. It's just another way um, of but kind of spiritually bypassing situations. Like we are going through very real human experiences, um, but you, your body's not going to lie to you, right? So we have the queen of cups. We have the eight of swords. We have the five of swords. We have the five of pentacles and we have the three of cups. Um, definitely with both of these fives here, there is a lot of lack and fear going on 
in the logical mind. The Eight of Swords and the Five of Swords, like you're really second guessing yourself quite a bit. And when you second guess yourself, you put yourself in a prison of your own making. And a lot of this has to do with finances. And here's the thing, or, or feeling like you're left out in some way. For some of you, you feel there's like a third party situation going on, which is I never go straight to that when I have the three of cups, but with the five of pentacles sitting right next to it, it feels like somebody's feeling very left out, feeling left out of a group dynamic, feeling like, and like maybe you're feeling left out of the group dy dynamic because you don't have the funds to be able to keep up with them. That felt like a very specific storyline so somebody out there feels like they can't keep up with the same group that they used to keep up with let's clarify queen of cups using your intuition and this is the thing is i feel like you guys are going to be a little extra sensitive this month especially those of you that have water in your charts <clears throat> There's five of cups with the queen of cups. And this is what I'm saying. There's another five. Right? Um, you know, there's there's going to feel, you're going to feel in the second half of March, you're really going to be releasing, especially this week, man, this week alone, the cosmic energy, like we have. Um, Mercury and the Sun and Neptune all meeting up with each other. There's going to be like a Mercury Kazemi on Friday. Um, uh, that would be the 18th, I think. 15th, 17th. Friday is the 17th. Um, but then they're all square Mars at the same time. So there's this overwhelming release that's happening, like an emotional release, all happening in Pisces, squaring Gemini, Mars, right? So, you know, yeah, there's grief there, that five of cups, but you have to remember what you still have. A lot of times when we're on our spiritual journey, there's a certain amount of material items that are stripped away from us. And it's almost like we have to learn that our bodies are safe, you know, this is what we have to learn to trust is our for our human form, our bodies and our human form um, and how it feels and where it's taking us instead of trusting what the outside is saying and how things are looking there. We have the six of pentacles on the eight of swords. The more you are giving and giving and giving and giving and giving of yourself to other people, the more you're going to get mentally exhausted and that mental exhaustion will put the loops going on in your head over and over and over and over and over again. There's a certain humility that happens when the material stuff falls away. And it doesn't even have to be material stuff. Like maybe you are realizing that you have to, you can't do the same job that you used to do. Maybe you're realizing that the friend groups that you used to be in, you can you no longer align with what they're talking about and where their vibration is and like what's going on there. It's not a bad thing, but we as humans don't like change. Like if there are things that were once comforting for us, we're going to try and hold on to it as hard as we possibly can because we don't like the change of it, right? And yet... The more we hold on to situations and people and, and um, experiences that are not good for our soul and we're doing that work, that shadow work of like, I know that I'm better than, you know, than who I used to be. I know that I'm a completely different person than who I thought I wanted to be. Um, it comes with breaking down that ego. And it's not about killing the ego, it's just breaking it down. It's, you know, we need the ego to survive. It's who we are. It's the I am. But it's that those negative ego points that we were conditioned with, right? This whole Saturn and Pisces in the third house. You didn't think your mental was going to be involved? 
So we have the nine of swords on the five of swords. And so the more fear and lack that you have in your brain, the harder the mental capacities. The nine of swords is like you're at your breaking limit. You're not sleeping. You're constantly thinking about everything all the time. And it looks like it might be money. It may be money that you're, you may owe people money and that's what you're worried about. Um, I got to tell you though, you know, that sometimes we just have to, there, we do as much as we possibly can. And then it's like, okay, well, I got to learn this lesson and figure this whole thing out here. And um, yeah, the king of swords on the five of pentacles for some of you, the king of swords feels like a government or like a company or a quote unquote authority figure, a strong arm person. So either um, an air sign is making you feel left out in some way, shape or form. And you have been giving to this person over. It could be an air sign. It could also be a fire sign. Um, but I feel like the fire sign is more of a friend than a foe. Anyways, I know that sounds weird, but that's how they wanted me to say it. Um, so, you know, there, there could be some loss that's happening here. Uh, could be that you owe money to somebody or something like that. And you're not really sure how that's going to happen. And that's kind of put you in a state like maybe you owe bills or whatever. Um, I'm, I feel like you have support, but you're being kind of stubborn when it comes to going for that support. Um, and it feels like somebody that you could actually trust and that is not somebody that is going to betray you. I have the three of cups here. I have the king of wands and I have the four of pentacles. For some of you, you're trying to decide between a fire sign and a king of swords. If you want to have a little bit more clue into your specific situation, I have 20% off of my tarot readings. You can get it recorded or you can get it live and we'll record that session as well. But you can either have it live with me or you can just get a recorded video if you know you want to do it anytime. Um, but this feels like there's a little bit of stubbornness with the Four of Pentacles, the King of Wands, and the Three of Cups. But I do feel like that you could have some support. Uh, and, and, you know, we have the Hierophant at the bottom of the deck with the Nine of Cups. This is a spiritual level up. That's what that Hierophant is really making me feel like. You could also have a Taurus figure that is helping you manifest as well. Um... Because the king of pentacles is right underneath. <laughs> so, but um, this does, it feels like this, these two cards here to me scream that you're sort, you're manifesting a level up and that's what's happening right now is the level up. And I, I feel like being like, I don't want you to be stubborn when it comes to try, you know, it's, it's surrender to trust, right? Like, let's go back to the card, surrender to trust. And knowing that there's going to be a way out, but there's a lot of mental uh, fear and happening in this reading. And so like quieting, like, like quieting your mind. And it's, and it's not that you... Like, it's not that you have to have a completely quiet mind when you're meditating. Just pack those things away. Like, I always think of my brain as like a library. And you know those, uh, this is way, I'm going to so age myself. But I was born in the 70s, so there you go. Um, we used to go in and pull out this long drawer and had all the cards in there with the Dewey Decimal System. And that's how I pack away all my thoughts when I'm like meditating or journeying or something like that. Is I... I put them away because I know those are the things I have to pay attention to when I'm conscious, right? When I'm not in meditate in a meditative state, when I'm not sleeping, the things I have to take care of in my life. Um, and so, you know, this is a this is a time to learn how to quiet those negative thoughts in your mind, to remember that we are 
infinite beings and you know even having really really difficult human experiences does not take away from that being infinite beings right so trusting your intuition trusting your decisions um take a leap of faith during this new <laughs> astrological new year i love you guys thanks for being patient with me bye